But we begin our report with a search for a submersible missing in the northern Atlantic. Five people were on board the vessel as it made its way to the depths of the ocean to explore the wreckage of the Titanic. Now, as officials cycle through strategies of rescue, they know success has a narrow window. The submersible left on the excursion with a 96-hour supply of oxygen on Sunday, meaning oxygen could completely run out by Thursday. CBS News correspondent Roxana Saberi has more on the search of efforts. Search crews are frantically scouring an area larger than the state of Connecticut. But so far, there's no sign of the missing vessel, the Titan, and its five passengers. What are the biggest challenges you're facing? You're dealing with a surface search and a subsurface search, and frankly, that makes it an incredibly complex operation. But time is dwindling fast because they're running out of oxygen. We know at this point we're approximately about 40, 41 hours. There's no other trip like this. For the past two years, the U.S.-based company OceanGate Expeditions has used the submersible to take tourists to the famous Titanic shipwreck, charging $250,000 per person. At nearly two and a half miles below the ocean surface, the Titanic is located at roughly twice the depth of the Grand Canyon. Finding the Titan won't be easy at those depths, even if it's floating on the surface. Rescuers are now gaming out different scenarios in the event they find it. Among the five missing passengers, Hamish Harding, a British billionaire who flew into space on Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin rocket last year. Pakistani British businessman Shahzada Dawood and his 19-year-old son Suleiman. And Paul Henri Narjolet, a former diver with the French Navy and a seasoned Titanic researcher. OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush is also on the vessel. We run the whole thing with this game controller. Last year, OceanGate hosted CBS Sunday Morning correspondent David Pogue on an expedition to the Titanic. But just minutes into his dive, something went wrong. So apparently those floats there came off the platform. So we're scrubbing? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the consensus up here. The weight of the situation is bearing down on friends and family. Janneke Mickelson spoke with her friend Hamish Harding the day before he left. It's not good. It, it really isn't good. It, it will be a miracle if the crew returns alive. And Roxana Saberi joins me now. Uh, Roxana, we saw you speaking with Coast Guard officials. Who else is helping with this rescue effort? Well, John, the effort is an international one. There are teams from Canada, France, and the U.S. involved so far. From the U.S., the Navy and the Coast Guard, as you mentioned, they're working together. And today I spoke with two members of New York's Air National Guard. They're helping search for the Titan on the surface of the water using technology like radar. But they've said they've already had several challenges yesterday. The weather was not good. Visibility was very poor. There was a lot of rain and fog, and though they had night goggles, they said they had no illumination to help them out at night. They were hoping for better conditions today. And also, Major Patrick Harding told me he's never searched for a submersible before. On previous missions, they've searched for things like sailboats and small fishing boats, so about the same size as the Titan, but he expects less of the submersible would appear on the surface of the water, maybe even a few inches only, so it would be a lot harder to spot. John and Roxana, what is, this involves a submersible. How is that different from a submarine? Yeah, they are unlike submarines, which leave and return under their own power. Submersibles require a ship to set them off and then to recover them. We know OceanGate had hired the Polar Prince to do just that with the Titan. The Titan was supposed to make multiple dives on each expedition, and the company has described it as quote the largest of any deep diving submersible. It reported that 28 people visited the Titanic wreck site last year. John? Hmm. Roxana Saberi in Boston. Thank you.